Okay, let's talk about multi-dimensional arrays. Um, not all arrays are just one dimensional, you know, one list of items. It could be a two-dimensional array or three-dimensional or more. Sometimes we need to store more than one set of data. Uh, so here, here are some examples. Um, scores of students in a class, three exams, batting average players on a baseball team for every team in the league. Um, table, just a table of data like is in Excel, row, rows and columns. That's a two-dimensional array, rows and columns within Excel. So I'm, I'm sure you, you've seen that. If not, you should really learn how to use Excel. Really important um, for people, um, for programmers, software developers, and for anybody in business. You, know, you can use Excel a lot. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, here's a two-dimensional array. You look at it as a geographical thing. If you want to, want to visualize it, it could be a two-dimensional uh, place in a, in a game. You know, you're going out someplace and you got X, X and Y coordinates, and so those are your two dimensions. You also have three dimensions. That means in space. So if you have a missile going someplace or an airplane flying around or, or a superhero flying somewhere, they're going through space. They're going through an X, Y, and Z dimension, but not just a, a, a flat two-dimensional surface, but they're also going up in space and doing something and coming back down again. So in this case, we have five, seven, and three. So the first dimension is five, second dimension is seven, third dimension is three up, or whichever. Um, so um, you're going to use dimension multi-dimensional arrays a lot. Um, I, I believe I read Amazon um, in their big data, they're, they're, uh, they have an array um, more than 4,000 dimensions. So you're going to be using multi-dimensional arrays, so you got to get used to it. The beauty of it is very just like a one-dimensional array, you just add more brackets. That's it. That's all the big difference is. You don't have to visualize it. More than three gets really hard to visualize anyway. Maybe four, you can think, okay, something within that, that three-dimensional space, right? There's an array of, of data in there. Uh, after that, it starts getting more and more and more difficult. But you don't have to visualize it. Um, Java just takes care of it for you, as any language would. So here you go. Two-dimensional arrays are basically one-dimensional arrays put together. Um, within within the, the system, the way the, the, the uh, Java works in any, any uh, language, really, um, arrays are, are, are a two-dimensional array is um, an array of arrays, basically. In this case, we have rows. We have five, six rows here, zero through five, and we have five columns, zero through four, four, four columns. So basically it's the rows over the number of columns. So this first first uh, row and column, zero, zero, that'd be zero, zero, right? Row zero, column zero. Down at the very end down here, the last one would be row five, column four, so it'd be five, four. So that'd be the two, that'd be the index of, of this last guy down here. Um, the first one down here, so we have row five, column zero right here. That's row five, column zero, row five, column one, row five, column two, et cetera. Okay, so here we have a two-dimensional array, kind of shows you here, columns, rows. So values, value, values is the name of the array right here. And zero, zero, that's how you would reference that, that, that value, whatever's in that, that field. Um, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, one, zero, one, one. So be sure you understand how this works. It's going, the first one here are the rows, zero, one, and two. So you notice zero, one, and two. Then going, going the second one is going to be columns. That, so row here stays zero on the first the first here every time. Um, and one stays the same as you go across, and two goes the same. So that means you can do four loops through here, right? So you can go through these with, with nested for loops. And we'll go over that here in a minute. And again, you'll do this a lot um, in programming. So row comes first, then the column. Make sure you got that correctly. OK, so here's in, in, in pseudocode. Um, we have no rows and columns. We have a four, two for loops here, nested for loops. So going from 0 to the number of rows minus 1, columns to 0. So this is going to go through the rows and columns, the first row, 0. And then go through all the columns first. And then go down the next row and go 0 through the number of columns. Then the next row, 0 through the number of columns. And it's going to keep on going processing that way. So let's look in, in, in uh, Java here now. Um, so for int row 0, row less than rows. Row plus plus, there you go. Call plus plus. So here, so memorize this, learn how to do this. You're going to write this a hundred times in this class by yourself. Once you get to other classes, you're going to keep on writing this kind of thing over and over. For loops and arrays go together like this. Um, don't use while loops. Use a, a for loop when you know how big how big uh, the the loop is going to be. Here you know how many. It's the size of the array, so you can always do that. So use for loops. So memorize how to do this. Okay, so here's three dimensions. You can think of it as a two-dimension 
right here and then different sheets. So again, using the Excel, Excel uh, uh, example, um, you have one sheet with an Excel, that's a two-dimensional array. You have other worksheets within Excel. So you got multiple, you can have three-dimensional arrays within Excel itself. So it's not that complicated. Excel has it. Everybody who uses Excel, them and their brother and their sister uses Excel. So it's not that complicated. So here we have how you do it. Seats is the name of the, the array. And the first index is three, the second index is five, and this is eight. So the first, second, and third index or dimensions. And that's how you, you would reference it. And you can say seat three, five, and eight, you know, or seat zero, 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 just like you would any, any, any uh, variable name. Okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. So far we've used one-dimensional arrays like this. Now we're gonna do two-dimensional arrays. So we, look, we just add a bracket. That's it, it's, it's, not, it's not that much, that much different. Um, so got the two brackets down here, then you say over here, new int four, three. So we got four and three. So how many, how many uh, rows are there? There's four rows. How many columns? Three columns. And what are the subscripts of the four rows? Zero, one, two, and three. Zero, one, two, and three. There is no four element. There's zero, but there are four elements. How many columns are there? There's three. Zero, one, and two. Right here. And here's a 3D array. Just add another bracket. That's all there is. It's, it's not that much different. This is called generalizing, you know, from your, from your knowledge into other knowledge. Okay. Uh, let's see. So you can do lengths also of a one-dimensional array. You can also do lengths of a two-dimensional array. How big is a two-dimensional array? Huh? Basically, it's how many rows are there and how many columns are there. So a two-dimensional array has multiple length attributes. So I'll show you how, how this works. So here we have we, we have um, votes is the name of the array. So we have votes zero, zero. And in this case, are all values are zero. So the length of the array is three. That's how many rows there are. You say length, you know, you know, you know votes dot length. It's gonna be three. There you go, votes dot length, and that's how you know how many how many rows there are that you need to loop through. How many columns are there? Well, let's show you that. Votes zero length. So the votes, the zero row within within that, the length of that is the number of columns you have within that that row. Votes one length, votes two length, etc. So you can put that inside inside your for loop, which you'll see how I'll do this in a little bit. And so that way you know how many rows there are and how many columns there are for each individual row. Now normally we're going to going to have uh, rectangular arrays, so not necessarily square, but it could be rectangular. You know, e e e e e either way, this way, that way. Um, not necessarily equal and being square. So you want to use the number this 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 notation votes zero length. Or my array zero length, my array you know x, you know my array row dot length in order to find out what the real length is because arrays could be ragged in they're not they don't have to be rectangular that you know boggles the mind but yeah they don't have to be they could be different different lengths so you want to want to know what the length of that particular row is don't assume that it's always going to be the same as all the others okay so here we have a basic for loop again. Um, rows and columns, R and C. It's kind of good to use R and C, get your, get your brain to think about it. If you're consistent about this consistently in all your code, you don't have to think too much about it. When you see R, you know what it is. It's a row. When you see C, you know it's a column. So we're going to leap through the rows from zero through to the rate while it's less than the array length. And C here, columns, while it's less than the array length with the row. So notice that. Okay, cool. So now, now check this. So you need to study this. This is how this is how where things are, are printed or, or so. Before you go into the or these two nested for loops, this up here happens before you do anything. Begin of each row. If I want to print something, at the beginning of each row, this is where it happens. I started the row here, this first for loop, right? And now before I start the columns, I'm going to print something. Begin each row. Say row one, row two, row three, row four, something like that. I can do that right, 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 right here. Then I start the columns. This in here, inside the inside the for loop, the second loop here, the inside loop, that happens for every single column. I may have if statements, I may have print statements, I, mean, I can have initializations, whatever happens, this can happen for every column within that, that row. When you're done with the, the last column here, this bracket here, last column, this happens after the last one. So if I want to print something on the far right-hand side, this is where it happens, right in, right in here, because it's after the last column. Then what happens here? That means all the rows and all the columns are, are done. And this happens after the last row and column. So if I want to print something at the bottom, 
you know, I have something, at, you know, a footer of some kind, I can do that down there. Okay, so study this. Remember how this works because you're, you're going to be doing this um, in this class and in other classes too. And the faster you are to, to understand it, you know, less work you have to do later on. Okay, see you later.